I'm the only one left. I'm going to continue to broadcast for as long as I am able. If I'm right, we should be able to pick up the signal right across the valley. The event has left markers. We don't understand it yet, but we're going to keep working to try and understand it. You can use them to find what you're looking for. The answers, they're all here. The answers are in the light. This is a special announcement by the Emergency Measures Committee. Due to exceptional circumstances, radio and television in this area has been brought under the control of the EMC as per the Crisis Preparedness and Action Bill of 1982. Keep your radio and television on at all times. Stay indoors and avoid contact with other people. Do not attempt to telephone outside your local area. Do not panic and remain civil and calm. Stay tuned to this station for updates. This is a special announcement by the Emergency Measures Committee. Due to exceptional circumstances, radio and television in this area has been brought under the control of the EMC as per the Crisis Preparedness and Action Bill of 1982. Keep your radio and television on at all...
I'm trying to do my job. You two will be the only staff on site for this rotation. I'm just saying, if the main gate's power fails, then there's no way in or out of the observatory. That's why there are backup generators. Jesus, why the hell are we even discussing this? Just don't you come running to me if you get locked in. If we get locked in, we won't be able to come running to you, will we? You let us worry about the clever stuff, and you can concentrate on sweeping up leaves and changing light bulbs. Happy? Now piss off. Ah, so... That was unnecessary. Just because you're angry with me doesn't mean you have to take it out on everyone else. Kate, can we just talk about this? No. Steven, I'm done. I just want to get out of this place, and tonight is our best chance of doing that. You prep the arrays, I'm heading up to Tower 6. Kate. I love you. You know that, right? Yeah, I know that. Come on, let's get started. Well, I suppose from that we can assume that they really are serious about this whole quarantine thing. If Mrs. Balton wandered off that way before they closed the road, I suspect we'll never find her. Not until this whole thing blows over. Well, it's more than a little odd. I mean, this is Yorton, for goodness sake. There was no need for them to be so rude. Well, if they are so concerned that they are willing to close off the roads, I suspect they would argue that there is every need. What is certain is that for the time being, none of us are going anywhere. But he had a rifle, a soldier with a rifle, in Shropshire. The world's gone stark raving mad. I've a good mind to write to my MP. You do that, Barb, and I'll personally deliver it for you, once this blockade is removed anyway. Come on, Barb. I can't spend all day chasing pensioners around the valley. The surgery won't open itself. I need to grab some paracetamol when we get back as well. Fucking headache all of a sudden. Hello? Kate, if you can hear this, you need to shut down the optical array. It's using the observatory as a conduit to reach us, and it started spreading its range beyond the valley. Kate, we can't afford to let it do that. It's getting stronger. I'm going to call Clive back, and I'm going to force him to order the strike. I just don't see what other choice we have. God knows Clive, if can you hear one. me? We need help. Who are you? Jesus, get off the floor! Get off the floor!
so hard on yourself. We've all had rejections. You haven't. <laughs> Come on. We'll look at the figures, tighten up the data, and resubmit. Your core idea is sound. You just got the number slightly wrong. Don't patronize me. I'm not patronizing you. I think you are a brilliant man, Dr. Appleton. Listen. I'm here, right? We're together, you and me. The alignment event tomorrow. It's yours, okay? You saw the opportunity, you ran the numbers. Even if they can't see it. I'm proud of you. Is that supposed to make me feel better? See you then. Look on the bright side, uh, around here. <laughs> You're a hero. Prodigal son returns, right? <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't erected a statue in your honor yet. <laughs> oh, you can laugh all you want. But I'll bet the parish council have a subcommittee working on that right now. <laughs> <laughs> The whole thing reminds me of high school, <laughs> seeing Mars for the first time, that same rush of excitement. <laughs> My hands are shaking.
keep looking, but it makes no sense. The area we picked the pattern up from can no longer be located on the scope. That's just not possible. You can see significant changes to the quality of the ambient light in that part of the sky. It's overexposed, like a Polaroid left in direct sunlight. You know, they uh, see me as an outsider here as well. Is that supposed to make me feel any better? You know, I understand it's difficult. That's all I'm saying. Your lot up at Vallis have never mixed with the local community. People here, they don't really understand what you do up there. Are you trying to get me to come to your church? It's not just about faith. It's about the community. Be involved. Be seen as part of it. One of them. <laughs> Good morning, Father. Lovely day. Oh, hello. Um... Mrs. Appleton, isn't it? It's Dr. Collins. Lady scientist. Whatever next? Good morning, Barbara. Father Wheeler. You really think that's a community that will ever see me as one of them? I can live with them staring at me. If they just stay out of my way. Hello? Hello? Oh, Amanda, I thought you'd left town. We tried. We did try. But they've closed all the roads and you can't get through. And, and then George and Ben said they had headaches. And then they started bleeding. And... It was horrible. They were so scared. So Neil turned the car around and, um, we saw the house was open and I know we shouldn't have, but we just came in to clean up the kids and, and then Neil and I started bleeding as well and it is all over my blouse. Everyone was so tired. It's all right, Amanda. Everything will be all right. Just try and calm down and tell me where Neil and the children are. They're upstairs. They were tired, and Neil said they could take a nap in the bed, and you know, we thought Barbara wouldn't mind as there were any children, and, and I was so tired, so Neil took them up, he took them upstairs to tuck them in. And? That was six hours ago. He never came back down. It's been too frightened. Why don't we go and look together? I can hold your hand if you like. Yeah. I think I could manage that, yes. Please help me. Of 
course I'll help you. Neil? Neil, are you there? Doing? I, saw you, I saw you doing that. Go with me. Don't come near me. This is people's property. You're scaring them. It's all over the village. It's got into everything. It's so far. What are you talking about? It's traveling down the wires. Dear God, when you lost your mind? Where is Kate? What have you done with her? Don't you understand? It's breaching the quarantine and adapting. Give me that bloody can. Hand it over, Appleton. Look, get off. Right, Sam, stop it. You weedy little shit. Give it's mine. Give me the Let's can. Stop it. I Why need it. Grow up. starting to manifest itself everywhere. Stephen, come back! Oh, Christ!
Is everything all right? Get out of my way. Where's Kate? Where do you think she is? Stephen, what's going on? Screw Kate. It's all her fault anyway. What's that mark on your face? Stephen! Stephen! What about the station? That's shut down too. So there's no way in or out of the valley. They're obviously serious about this flu thing. Phil doesn't think it's flu at all. He said he's been practicing medicine for 30 years and he's seen plenty of flu and he said this doesn't feel right at all. Well, there's nothing of any use on the radio. Sorry I'm late, everyone. Have you started? Yes, but to be honest, there's not really that much to discuss. This quarantine is in place. There's roadblocks and everything. No one really seems to know anything, but people are definitely missing. More of them, too, not just a couple of old biddies. No one's seen the Sullivans since yesterday, and the house is just sitting there unlocked. I just got back from the farm. All of Frank's cows died in the night. He's devastated. Poor man. Hasn't he had enough for one year? First Mary, and now this. Well, if no one's coming in to sort this mess out, we're just going to have to do it ourselves. Uh, Barbara, get Phil to do a stock take on medication. Jeremy, put the word out for people to congregate at the village hall. It's best we get everyone in one place for the time being. Good. I'll organise supplies. We'll have a lot of hungry mouths to feed. There's plenty at the depot, but well, let's start with what's here in the village. I'll draw up a rotor. Charlie, you help me with that? Anything for you, Meg? I'll head out into the valley and scoop up the isolated families. 
and check in with Lizzie Graves at the camp. Now, has anyone seen or heard anything from Stephen Appleton or his wife? I couldn't stop it. I couldn't do anything. Stop, stop it. Calm down. I'll get back. It's in my head. Howard, wait. Ah! Oh. Ah! Father. Father, are you all right? It's my ankle. Oh, Jesus, Lord, I think it's broken. Uh, Howard, go and get help. There's no one left. No one's coming to help us. Please, Howard, fetch help. The light. They're in the light. I can see everyone in the light. And even reach the back fence, silly old bugger. Well, loaves and fishes we can manage, Father but garden Jeremy, design is a little bit. Might I have a word? Mrs. Boyles, of course. Meg, will you excuse us, please? Uh, see you back at Charlie's later. Cheerio, Wendy. I was speaking to Barbara. She said there were some irregularities about Mary's morphine. Good grief. Those are private medical records. Barbara should know better than to be discussing that sort of thing with you. If Dr. Wade finds out, he'll have no choice but to suspend her. Damn it, Wendy! Your brother is grieving. Mary was sick for a long time, and I'm glad it's over for her. Go and support Frank. He needs you now. God knows what you did. He sees. I just break and overlook Mary's weakness, but you, a man of the cloth, if you, have an issue you with... bring shame on this parish. If you have an issue with me, I suggest you write to the Bishop of the Diocese. I have parishioners to attend to, excuse me.
electrical failures all over Tower 6. The light is flowing like liquid. Its sense of purpose is uh, overwhelming. There's something in... Steven? Steven, is that you? Meg, are you here? Here. I'm in the lounge. There are too many empty houses tonight. Most of the village is gone now. My head's killing me. Have you listened to the phones? No, I thought they were all dead. There's a strange kind of static now. I think I heard numbers in it. It sounded like the American woman. Kate? She's still alive. No one's seen her. I is Charlie back? Not yet, no. I'm sorry. That's all right, Father. Listen, you go on ahead. I'll just rest here a little longer. Sleep well. I've been recording the pattern for three hours and so far have accumulated over three megabytes of binary data. The pattern does not, at this point, seem to be part of any recognizably closed loop, but there remains symmetry, despite the conflicts.
The magnetic field is causing disruptions to phone signals and the rest of the electrics. There are voices on the line. It's 4 a.m. Maybe everyone is up looking at the light show. to make a decision, Lizzie. Especially now. I do love him, Father. I, I love them both. He's married. There are other people involved in this. Oh, I hardly think that anyone's in a position to claim the moral high ground, do you? Well, I take your point about Stephen. And Robert. But I, I think Kate might see things differently. Do you? I mean, she's not screwing anyone else, pardon my French, but she spends all day and night locked up in that observatory. Stephen says they barely see each other. It's hardly a marriage, is it? Visual and auditory distortions are becoming more frequent, along with mild convulsions to the left side, all of which support a preliminary diagnosis of intracranial hypertension, occurring as a result of a substantial and rapidly expanding tumor originating, I believe, within the hypothalamus. Cognitive functions are currently unimpaired, aside from this crippling headache. Hemorrhaging is becoming more frequent, with darker clots passing through the nasal passages primarily. I believe I am dying. This is certainly not flu. I have ever encountered, and certainly a tumor cannot expand this rapidly. In the blood clots, I see tiny flecks of what looks almost like, if I had to try and find a description, liquid light. I cannot explain this phenomenon.
Dr. Wade, here you are. There's a queue of patients a mile long out there. Just send them to the village hall with the others, please, Bob. Doctor, people are scared. Mrs. Gables just called me and said her husband's vanished. She was very frightened. She said there was blood coming up from his ears and his what nose... What the hell do you want me to do? Until they lift the quarantine, we're not going anywhere. Just tell them to drink plenty of fluids, stay warm, and follow the instructions on the radio. Doctor, Phil, please, you have a duty to your patient. Your nose. 